In this video, I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite Affinity Designer tips and tricks that will help you with your t-shirt designs. Let's go. Thanks for joining me on this video. My name is Juno with Detour Shirts. I've been designing and selling t-shirts online since 2005. If that's something you like to learn how to do, don't forget to subscribe to this video, hit that subscribe button. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about some Affinity Designer tips. If you follow my channel at all, you might have seen this video right here, which is about Affinity Designer. I have a part one, part two, and part three. And I thought I would take some time today to tell you about some little tips and tricks, some things that are not in those videos but can be really helpful for you. And these are some quick tips that I use personally that help me in my t-shirt design. So I'm gonna go through all of them. So you're gonna to wanna to stay to the end to see all six tips as well as another edition of Trend Credits. So lots to see in this video and all of this is gonna be in Affinity Designer. So let's get into Affinity Designer right now. So for tip number one, I'm gonna talk about artboards. So artboards is what you have when you first start off. You start off with this right here. This is your artboard, current artboard. I have a lot of questions in the comments on how to make multiple artboards. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Click on the artboards tool right here and then insert artboard. So when you do that, it's gonna usually change the background color to here and you'll see now it says artboard one and this is when you can make more artboards. Let me zoom out by clicking Command minus here. You can see you can do Command plus to zoom back in. Uh, and then I'm gonna pan over by holding down Shift and clicking my mouse and moving the background so that you can do that really easy. There's a couple of ways that you can change your artboard or add another artboard. Um, you can change the size of your artboard by just clicking on the handles um, like that or typing it in here. Right now I have it at inches. You may wanna change it to pixels. So let me change that right now. I'm gonna to go to um, File and Document Setup right here. And you can see it says inches. You wanna change that to pixels. You may wanna change it to pixels. Some people like inches. Um, pixels, and then you can see the size here. And I can change this one to 5400 or actually the width is 4,500 and the height H here is 5,400. So let's do that. And that's the Merch by Amazon size and it works for Redbubble too. So again, zoom out, Command minus, and you can see right there. One way to add another artboard is, I'm gonna move this again, holding down Shift and mouse, right? Um, I can click on the artboard and I can hold down Option and Shift and drag and see it makes a copy there. So now I have an exact copy, 4,500 by 5,400. And then I can just change this one to 4050, right? Which is the hoodie. Here's another way to make an artboard. You can just click on the artboard tool and just drag it like that. And then you can make another one. And you can change this one to whatever size. If you wanna make this size for your pop socket or for your phone or for other things, you can do that too. So you can have multiple artboards and you can label them too. So if you wanna label this first one, artboard one here, and wanna name this t-shirt size, you can. And of course you can label the other ones as well. So that's how you do artboards. That's your tip number one. So tip number two is about fonts. So let me show you uh, the fonts here. If you go to this font or, or this text tool, artist text tool, or yeah. So you can type in here. I'm gonna just type in font. Um, and it's mainly about your how you save your font. So your favorite font. So you can see if you're like me and you click on here and you see all here, you have a ton of fonts, right? There's so many fonts. Usually um, graphic designers and designers uh, t-shirt designers just have way more fonts than they can use and you may want to have a way to do favorites and Affinity Designer has a good way, a really good way to save your favorites. You can see right here it says favorites. You have all, recent, used, and favorites. Clicking on favorites you'll notice I have a subset of the all and these are my favorites. I have some good script fonts, I have some good rough fonts here. Um, Nexa Russ is a good one. You know, I, these are some of the ones that I show. Of course, Veneer is in here, right? Um, 
And the way to do that is when you go to all, you'll see a heart right here on the very right. So if you wanna use this, for example, maybe I want American Typewriter as one of my favorite fonts. I'll just click on the heart right there. And now when I go to my favorites, America, American Typewriter is in my favorites. And a way to get it off of my favorites is to unclick the heart. And then when I go back to all and go back to favorites, you can see it's not there anymore. So anything with a heart on it is your favorite font and it will pull up here in this tab and it's just a real quick way to find the fonts that you use the most or like to use the most, uh, especially when t-shirt designs, I, I usually have a handful of them that I just use that I like to use all the time. So here is my favorites. You can see a bunch of my favorites um, that I use, but uh, make your own favorites and uh, that's an easy way to do that. That is tip number two, favorite fonts. So for tip number three, I'm gonna talk about guides. So when you're drawing something, want a straight line or make sure that something's centered. Let's say you want to uh, make sure that this is centered in here. A lot of times you might wanna use guides. And so the easy way to use guides is to just drag it from the side ruler here. So you can see there's a ruler right here on the top and the bottom. And the way to show that if you don't have that already is to hit Command R. So Command R will get rid of them and Command R will get bring them back so command r command r you can see right there and all you have to do is drag uh the guides from the side ruler so i'm going to drag it from here you can see right there those are my vertical guides and if i drag it from the top those are my horizontal guides so if you want to box something in and want to make sure that it fits into that size uh, that's good one way that i use guides uh, for t-shirt design is i may want to only Put my t-shirt maybe i don't want to put it on the full size i may want to just do you know 300 pixels in and one way to do that is to just do this and make sure that it's 300 pixels let's go um, with 300 all right and then I, I can bring my guides into 300 pixels in here as well as here right there and I can flip this around and make sure that it's 300 pixels from the top and so on and kind of bottom here. So I may want to use guides this way to make sure that I don't want to go edge to edge on my design, but I want to go almost to the edge and bring it in. So it could be 300 pixels, it could be 600, whatever you want. Um, I would say at least 300. Sometimes I bring it in, I kind of do, I kind of do more of a five, 600 because I don't want it all the way to the edge there. So something like that. And of course you can measure it again if you want, want it to be 500 exactly, whoops. So of course you can make that rectangle again and make it 500 if that's what you want. Let's see what 500 is. Yeah, I think I like five, 500 is good right there. Like that guide there right? So those can be your guides for your t-shirt design and just make sure that it fits in there. So guides can be really handy, not only for that, but for other things when you're drawing and things like that. So that's your tip number three, rulers and guides. So for tip number four, I'm going to talk about scrolling zoom. So we already know, I told you about this, when you do command plus, you're zooming in, command minus zooms out. So you could command plus like that and command minus like that but there may be um, a part in your design where you want it just zoomed in quite enough and maybe this is too zoomed in, but this is too zoomed out. You can hold down option and use your scroll bar on your mouse to just kind of zoom in a little bit. You see what I'm doing there? So I'm holding down option and I'm using the scroll bar on my mouse. So it's option and scrolling and you can get right into there as close as you need and not very far. So. Um, this can kind of help you zoom in to exactly the point that you want instead of having to be that zoomed in or that zoomed out, right? You can go somewhere in between. And that's how you do it in between. It's called the zoom scroll. I, at least I call it the zoom scroll. And that's by holding down option and using the scroll wheel on your mouse by just scrolling in and out like that. And hopefully that's a good tip for you. It's uh, I know I use that a lot when I want to just get right into the spot that I'm doing a design on and I need to get just the perfect zoom in there. So that helps a lot. So that is your tip 
Number four, scrolling zoom. So the next tip I want to share with you is called duplicate. And duplicate is a little bit more than copy. And let me show you why. Um, let's say I have a square here. I'm using the square tool, a rectangle tool to just make a square. I'm going to hold down shift to make a perfect square. So let's say I have a square right there. If I just hit command J, let me pull up my layers palette so you can see there's the square. If I just hit command J, it just does the same thing. You may think, oh, I just copied it behind. And that's something you can do, but let's take it a step further. So let's go here and I hit, I'm gonna hit option and shift. And you see how I'm copying it just this far away. So now um, duplicate knows to make this copy as well as to move it. So if I hit command J again, or now I'm gonna copy it and you can see that it just does it again, right? So it moves it It knows that I moved it as well as copied it. And I can hit command J all day long and it just will keep copying it. The way, the reason why this is really cool is if you wanna make a grid pattern, let's say here, and then now I can copy holding down option and shift. And let's say I'm pulling it down. I wanna make a checkerboard pattern. You can see there. Now if I hit command J again, it knows to copy all of those and move all of those. So here, command J, boom, 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 boom. So Command-J is really powerful because not only does it duplicate uh, your object, but it can duplicate where you moved it, your movement as well. So um, let me show you another reason, another way you can use Command-J. I'm gonna do Command-Z, which is undo, and go back. So Command-J, this Command-Z, undo, undo, which is a good one. I, I hope you know that one already. But you can also rotate things. So um, Let's go here and rotate. So it also works on rotating. So let's say I take this and I do option shift and I rotate it here using this handle and I move it up here. It remembers all of that. So if I hit command J, look at that. I can make a circle and it does perfectly. It rotates it around there. So another way to use command J, if you wanted to do a flower or something like that, you just draw one petal and then rotate it around the center. So Command-J, super powerful. So that is your tip number five, Command-J or duplicate. So for tip number six, the last tip for this video, got lots more tips, by the way. If you wanna see more tips, let me know in the comments. Um, but so here I'm gonna zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. So this is the full t-shirt size, right? Let's say my t-shirt design is this. I'm gonna um, make it bigger. Boom, to my edge right there. Okay, so that's my t-shirt design, not a great one. But if I wanna export it, I click on my artboard. So tip number six is exporting. And I'm gonna show you the quick keys for exporting. All you do is hold down Command, Option, Shift, and S. And it's gonna pull up this export. Sorry, I went off the screen here. Here's export. And you can see by default, um, it may be JPEG, but you want PNG right here and you can see it's saving it at 4,500 by 5,400, and the area's t-shirt size. Um, you may want to do just selection only right here, so you don't have that white background if there was a white background, and hit export, and that's how easy you, you can do it. I'm gonna hit export so you can see. Um, it's gonna say save as, I'm gonna just say uh, t-shirt design, whatever you wanna call it, it's usually whatever the name or phrase is in my t-shirt is what I call it, but since I don't have any words, I could say um, blocks in a circle, you know, just to describe it. Save it to my desktop, and you're gonna see, I'm gonna pull it up here into frame so you can see it. And you can see that it knocked out the white, and it's just showing the the design. So that's what you want to see. Make sure that the background has this kind of this dark gray to show that it's not a white background. And now when you put this on a shirt, you're just going to see the blocks there. Okay. So that's how you do it. Um, export really easy, quick key. You don't have to go. I mean, you could go to file and export right here. Um, just saving you a click. So that's what this is saying. Option shift command uh, S, right? So um, that's your quick key for export, and that's how you export a t-shirt uh, or a PNG. 
I'm designing in CMYK still, exporting as a PNG, which is RGB, uh, which is an RGB file, and you'll be fine. And then you just upload that PNG file to Merch by Amazon or Redbubble or wherever um, pod site you're gonna use, and you'll be okay. So those are your six tips for affinity designer, especially for t-shirt design. Hopefully those tips were really helpful for you. Um, thanks so much for staying all the way to the end. And your reward for staying to the end is another edition of Trend Credits. Thanks for staying to the end for this Trend Credit. Here is your Trend Lemonade Crew shirt. So take a look at this. Um, they got some low BSRs here. Some of them aren't so low, but it is trending. Take a look at some of these other ones. Here's some lower ones. Lemonade Crew, Lemonade Crew. I'm guessing so many people are doing lemonade stands during the summer. It's hot, they're making some extra money, right? So Lemonade Crew, this is great. And it's great because you could probably sell multiple ones of these, right? You're gonna get one for your friends. Like if you buy one and you have a Lemonade Crew, depending how big your crew is, you may buy you know three, four, five of these. So um, you can get some good sales on here. Lots of people sell lemonades, little kids, um, maybe some adults even do some lemonade stands uh, on the side near their house, right? So take a look at this on Merch Informer. Um, it's getting an A, so you know it's good. That's the competition. So got low competition and some low BSRs. That's what you want to look for. If you don't have Merch Informer, I have a link in the description for Merch Informer. Click on that and you can save some money there. But take a look at this trend again, Lemonade Crew. Uh, make sure that you do it in your own style. Make sure that you do it um, something that uh, is unique and not copying these. You wanna make sure that yours are better than these if you if you come up here. So think of that. Think of some other things that people will maybe sell. Maybe it's for people that do lawn mowing services. That's what kids do. Some other things that they do, um, selling candy or, or things like that. Um, could be, just look that up. So your trend for this video uh, is Lemonade Crew. So that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this video was really helpful for you, all those affinity designer tips. If it was, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. I got a little one right here in the corner that you can hit, click on that one as well. Um, and before I leave, I wanted to ask a question. The question of the day is, is there something you want to learn how to do on affinity designer? I know that uh, I gave you some tips here, but there may be some other things that you wanna learn on Affinity Designer. You may be new to Affinity Designer. Maybe uh, you're new to designing t-shirts on Affinity Designer. Let me know um, what kind of things that you wanna learn on there to help you in your t-shirt design or designing things in Affinity Designer for different products. May not just be for t-shirts, maybe for stickers and other things. Maybe you wanna know how to do a pattern, things like that. Um, let me know in the comments and there so so thanks again for watching and if you want to see more affinity designer videos click on these right here and as always guys keep creating and keep learning i'll see you on the next one bye